Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to show you how that Michelson Morley interferometer and that experiment to detect the ether actually worked. So we're in a position, let's say, that the ether wind is moving from right to left. The experiment is set up like this. We have a beam of light being emitted right here. There's a um, kind of like a mirror here that allows transmission of some light and also reflects some of the light because we know it's kind of like a, a piece of glass so to speak because in some cases some of the light will be reflected some of it will be transmitted so some of the light will be uh, reflected to go to mirror two and some of it will be transmitted in order to go to mirror one now because of the relative position of the ether wind or the direction of the ether wind the position of the mirrors and the travel of the light when the light is traveling from here to here to mirror two it's going against the ether wind so the observed speed should be slower when the light is reflected out of the mirror back in this direction the observed speed should be the sum of the speed of light plus the speed of the ether which of course will be the velocity of the earth as well in this direction as we saw before the speed will be rated to the Pythagorean theorem, it will be the square root of the velocity of light squared minus the velocity of the ether squared. So let's calculate now the time that it would take to go from here to there and back, and the time that it would take for light to go from here to there and back. So we're trying to get the difference in the time. So time two is a time for light to go from here to there and back to mirror number two. So the time two is associated with mirror two. So we, need, we take the distance from there to there, which is considered L, divided by the velocity. And the velocity, of course, would be the C plus V sub A. So that would be L. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm talking about the wrong one. Going from here to there, it's C minus V sub A. So L divided by C minus V sub A, the velocity of the ether. And then coming back, it's the distance divided by C plus V sub A, because now it's the sum of the two velocities. If we then algebraically solve for this, notice we have to get the common denominator, and then we multiply things through, and then we factor out a c squared, so we write in this format, and then this c and one of those cancels out, so we end up with 2L over c times 1 minus the velocity of the ether squared divided by the speed of light squared, all over to the negative 1 power because it came from the denominator, and that is then the time t2 for the light to go from there to there and back. Now we need to calculate the time that it takes for light to go from there to there and back. Again, it'll be the distance divided by the velocity in one direction plus the distance divided by the velocity in the opposite direction. But since the light, the speed of the light is in the vertical direction and the speed of the ether is in the perpendicular direction, the relative losses will be the same in both directions. The distance is the same, so it's L divided by the square root of C squared minus V sub A squared. Again, that's that Pythagorean theorem uh, rule. And then if we algebraically combine those, they have the same denominator, so we can combine them. Then we factor out a C squared, take it out of the radical, become C. So we end up with 2L over C, and this goes to the numerator to the minus one half power. And notice the comparison. This is T2, and this here is T1. So now we use the, the concept that if x is much, much smaller than 1, then 1 minus x to the n power can be written like this. So here we can write this as 1 minus this times negative 1 half, and this can be written as 1 minus this times the negative 1. So to simplify it, if we take the difference between time 2 and time 1, which is this right here that came from here, and this right here that came from there, we factor out a 2L over C, and this can be written as 1 plus, because the negative 1 times this becomes a plus, plus V sub A squared over C squared. And then we have minus 1 plus, because this minus 1 half times this makes that a plus, 1 half times V A squared over C squared. The ones cancel out, and this minus a half of that gives us just a half of that, so it's 1 over 2 c squared, so where am I at? Right here. So here we have 2L over c, and then we have a c squared factored out, and then we have a 2 from the 1 over 2, and then we have the VA squared, which means that this minus a half of that gives us a VA squared. So algebraically, this then reduces to LVA squared over c cubed, and that is the measured distance in time or the calculated distance in time. 
So this is how we calculated, not us, but, but uh, Mickelson and Morley, how they calculated the, dif the difference in time of the light going from there to there and there, and the light going from here to here to here, if the speed was affected by the ether of space. That was the whole question. Of course, that was simply not enough. What they wanted to do then is they took the whole experiment and they rotated it by 90 degrees. So they took the whole thing in this position and they rotated it so that mirror 2 is over here and mirror 1 is over here. And then they ran the experiment again. This then doubled the delta t by doing so. And then they compared that double t to the phase shift they were expecting. So at least this shows you how they calculated the difference in time on the two paths on the Michelson interferometer, and then they did it again by rotating the whole experiment another 90 degrees to calculate the difference in time between here and here, so that they effectively doubled this number to get a better sense of whether or not they could measure the ether wind. And on the next video, we're going to show you how they did that and how they then calculated the phase shift that they were supposed to observe using that interferometer. So stay tuned, and we'll show you how that was done. Yes, the whole experiment was rotated like this. Well, actually, no, no, I, I take that back. You, you rotate these things over here, so now you're looking for the light going this way and the light going this way instead of this way and that way. So again, they're going to again get a delta T and then going to add the two together. Because the rule is that 1 minus x to the n power is equal to 1 minus n times x. If n is a negative number, that makes that into a positive. What rule is that? Um, that's the, what do you call it? Um, I forget the name. But we use it all the time. Uh, what's it called again? Hmm, what's it called? What's it called? Yeah, it's... It's, the, it's, the, it's, some, it's an expansion, and we only take the first two terms because the third term is so small that we can ignore it. Especially, we can do that if this is much, much smaller than that. And since this speed, the speed of the Earth, is so much smaller than the speed of light, especially when they square both, that you can just ignore that. It's a very, very tiny amount for the third, third term. Okay. <clears throat>